MacBook streamers. This is how you stream your PS5 to OBS on a MacBook all without a capture card. Let me show you how to do it. So this is using the same method that we used in the previous video where I showed you how to connect your PS5 to your PC using PS Remote Play. However, instead of a PC, we're gonna be using a MacBook today. So if you're familiar with this method, you might know where we're going with this, but if not, let me walk you through it. So my MacBook doesn't actually have any of these apps right now. So we're just gonna go ahead and download everything fresh. So as always, all links are down in the description for you guys, but you wanna go ahead and go to playstation.com and get the PS Remote app. You're gonna come on here and you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom of the page until you see this section here. You wanna go ahead and click Windows PC Mac download, hit download once you get on the next page and click Mac. And on this page, you're gonna see all the requirements you're gonna need your Mac to have in order to run PS Remote Play. Once you've checked that you've had all the requirements good on your Mac, you wanna scroll down until you see install app, go ahead and agree to the terms and hit download. Next up, we wanna go ahead and add OBS. If you don't already have this, this is how you do it. You go to obsprojects.com slash downloads. As always, all links are down in the description. So actually, I'm just now realizing this. On this page, you can either pick whether you have the Intel MacBooks or the Apple Silicon app MacBooks. If you have an M1 in your MacBook, one of the new Newer ones you want to go ahead and click Apple Silicon and if you have an older MacBook it's gonna be the Intel one and if you're unsure you can always go to the Apple symbol up on top go to about this Mac and you should see right here where it says chip uh, which MacBook Pro you have and which chips that you have inside your MacBook you want to go ahead and give OBS the permissions it needs in order to run. All right, so now we're going to connect our PS5 to our MacBook and set up Remote Play. So before we connect the PS5 to your MacBook, we want to go ahead and go to your settings on your PS5. You want to scroll down to System, and you want to make sure Remote Play is enabled. Go ahead and leave your PS5 on because you're going to need it on uh, to be able to connect to your MacBook. So you want to come back over to your MacBook and go ahead and open up Launchpad. Scroll over to you find your PS Remote Play. Play app and go ahead and open it. It's going to ask you to sign into your PSN. So once you logged into your PSN, you should see this window pop up. It asks you if you want to pick your PS5 or PS4 to connect, and it's going to look for your PS5 on the same internet connection that your PC or your uh, MacBook is connected to. Quick tip, if your PS5 is connected with Ethernet to your router, you will get a lot better results than if you're using just Wi-Fi. So if you have that option, go ahead and connect an Ethernet into your PS5. Holy crap. <laughs> so once it's located your PS5, you should see your PS5 here on PS Remote Play in this little window here, and you should be able to use your keyboard uh, on your Mac to actually move around and select things. All right, cool. So let's connect your controller now to your MacBook. This part is important. If you connect your PS5 controller to the PS5 directly, it's going to end the session that you have currently for your remote play. As you can see, my remote play just stopped as soon as I connected my PS5 controller to my PS5. Instead, we're going to use the controller and connect it to your MacBook via Bluetooth. So in order to do this, you're gonna hold down the share button on your controller and the PlayStation button for a few seconds until you see the controller light up with the little blue streaks of light here. On your MacBook, you wanna go ahead up to the toolbar up here and go to your Bluetooth connections. You wanna go ahead and pair a new device to your MacBook. It should be down here nearby devices. DualSense wireless controller. We're gonna go ahead and connect that. So once it's connected, you should see that your PS5 controller is working with the remote play, which is really cool actually. It's, it's kind of cool. So if you're new to OBS, it might look a little intimidating at first, but trust me, it's, it's real easy once you get inside here. You're gonna have your scenes, you're gonna have your sources, your audio mixer, scene transitions, and controls. For this purpose of this video, we're just gonna focus on your scenes and your sources, mainly your sources. So another quick note about the PS Remote Play app, if you full screen it, you're not gonna be able to see it inside of OBS. At least I can't find where the window is. So we're gonna leave it as this window right here and it's still gonna have some good resolution on it once we capture it inside of OBS. But you wanna come back into OBS and go into your sources and then add a new source. And then you're gonna go to uh, Mac OS Screen Capture. You wanna go ahead and call this anything you want but for simple simplicity sake we're gonna call it a uh, game game that, that works game click okay 
and then we're going to, for method, change this from display capture to window capture. Go down to window and find your PS Remote Play app down here. Click that and you should see it pop up in the preview as well as the background here. You're gonna go ahead and click OK. So to my surprise actually on this, you don't have to add your game audio as a separate audio output source because the screen capture actually catches the audio of the screen. So you actually uh, are already set up there. This is very different on PC, by the way. This is why I'm mentioning it. All right, so you have your game capture now up on OBS and you have audio coming out of your MacBook, but you kind of really don't want to have your audio coming out of your MacBook because it's coming out of speakers and you're streaming with a mic, you know, you don't want double, double audio, audio feedback. feedback. So you're gonna want to use some headphones to make sure you don't get that double audio feedback. So in my testing with this and setting this up, I realized that you can't use Bluetooth headphones, or at least in my case, these Bluetooth headphones that I'm using, it kind of breaks the capture for some reason, the audio capture. So don't use Bluetooth headphones if you're finding that it's not working, but cabled headphones actually do work. You don't have to do anything different. You just gotta plug in some wired headphones and you'll see that you're still getting audio out of your wired headphones. So you can hear the game and your stream can hear the game and you're not getting any double feedback. All right, so we have your video capture settled. We have the audio coming for your video capture. Now you want to go ahead and set up your audio input. So assuming that you guys have a mic already, you wanna go ahead and come down to the plus button. Go ahead and uh, add a audio input capture and we're going to select whichever audio input that you have. So for me, I'm gonna be using this USB desk mic here and I'm going to select it here in the dropdown for devices. Go ahead and hit OK. And you should see an audio input that you have a mic connected. You can control your volume levels here and uh, go into your advanced audio properties to control whether you wanna hear your voice or not by doing monitor output, and I just realized that my cursor is showing here on the PS Remote Play Capture. So you just want to go to your game uh, uh, source, go to show cursor and uncheck that box so that your cursor doesn't show up. From here, you can pretty much go wild and customize it however you want. You can add a camera source. You can uh, add other browser sources for alerts and stuff like that. But that is a whole nother video in itself on how to set up your OBS. If you're interested in any of that, go ahead and subscribe and leave me a comment down in the comments and let me know what kind of videos you want to see on that topic. If you want me to go through like a whole setup, uh, how I set up my OBS or uh, how to set up alerts where I get my alerts from or overlays, let me know that in the comments. And that is it guys, that is the entire setup for your OBS. So now all you need to do is hit start streaming. And if you're still having problems with your particular setup, don't worry fam, I got you. So I set up a new way that you guys can contact me so that I can walk you through your particular setup and help you uh, put together your OBS or walk you through any of these tutorial videos. Go down to the description section and click the link to it so that you can book a call with me and we can jump on a Zoom and I can help you out personally. I used to do this with people People who were messaging me on Facebook, they used to DM me and ask me specific questions and sometimes I'll jump on a FaceTime. It kind of gets a little chaotic, especially when you have uh, multiple people asking you for things and sometimes it's really difficult to reach everybody. So this new way definitely will help streamline everything and also help support the channel and the cause that I'm trying to do here, helping you guys with your streaming setups and getting your stream started. In any case, I'm here to help. Make sure to like and subscribe if you found this valuable, if this helped you out at all. And if you wanna take your stream to another level and show your controller inputs on your stream, I showed you how to do that as well. Click the video over there if you wanna see how to do that and I will see you over there.